Good evening. I want to thank everyone for coming to the Henry Ford College Board of Trustees meeting for November 21st, 2022. May I have a roll call, please? Trustee Berry? Trustee D'Ambrosio? Here. Trustee Mosip? Here. Trustee Petrikoff? Here. Trustee Thorpe? Here. Trustee Watts? Here. President Chair McDonald? Here. Next item, please. Item, please. Approval of minutes. Approval of minutes for the following Board of Trustees meeting. Board of Trustees Audit Committee meeting, October 17th, 2022. Regular Board of Trustees meeting, October 17th, 2022. Closed session, October 17th, 2022. And Board of Trustees policy meeting, October 19th, 2022. Make any necessary, any necessary corrections and move to approve these minutes. So move. Support. Okay, I have a motion to move by um, Trustee D'Ambrosio, supported by Trustee Petchlikoff. Are there any corrections? May I have a roll call, please? Trustee Berry? Trustee D'Ambrosio? Yes. Trustee Mosep? Yes. Trustee Petchlikoff? Yes. Trustee Thorpe? Yes. Trustee Watts? Yes. Chair McDonald? Yes. Next item, please. President's <coughs> items, Michigan Community College Association, President Calvahuna. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Good evening, trustees and colleagues from Henry Ford College. I, in a moment, will introduce to you our guests, but before I do that, I um, would ask, Madam Chair, if, if it's okay with you, if I ask for uh, two separate um, moments of silence to um, commemorate a couple um, bits of sadness that we're encountering. The first is, uh, it, it is with a heavy heart that I have to um, recognize one of our students, Giazia Miller, has passed away and I will say um, I'm not going to make any more comments about Miss Miller in <coughs> keeping with what is our standard practice of not making comments in this type of time unless and until we talk to and are uh, explicit with the family about their wishes and without having had that I'll simply say that the college is mourning our loss and I'll ask for a moment of silence uh, now Madam Chair. Absolutely. Thank you Madam Chair. The next is um, uh, those of us in higher education uh, are, uh, we take it very seriously to help students understand the world around them and to move forward into the world as a better, a more educated person. And over the last, since the last time we've come together, we've seen some, some things that may have caused, and I, I suspect do cause some of our community, either our students or our faculty and our staff, to feel unsettled and in, in loss and possibly even fear. You know that, um, Unfortunately, we had the loss of uh, several students at the University of Virginia and at the University of Idaho. Um, it's not a difficult thing for uh, students at any higher education institution to see that and wonder, what about me? Um, and of course, just very recently, we saw uh, a shooting in a nightclub that um, was frequented and, and, and serving the LGBTQ community, and that arrived in, and caused death and injury. All of those things led to the uh, difficult reality of lost humans, students, people. But also, I would say, Madam Chair, it, it is a difficult reality that I think our students and staff um, want to know that we as an administration and as a board, um, if you're feeling scared and worried, we're here to help. And, and as the beginning of that, we'll take a moment now, if you will, Madam Chair, to let us reflect on, on the loss of life over the last month. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and I, I'll, I'll cap that off by just saying to the, any uh, of our community, whether they be students or faculty or staff, who, if any of these uh, items are causing them concern, we take a lot of pride in supporting each other as a community. And we do have uh, resources to protect and support those that are feeling at risk or, or fearful. Please do reach out to me or anyone else in your community that uh, we can offer support to. Now, the next uh, item I want to bring to your attention, uh, trustees, is one that I'm excited about and, and prideful about. And I, I try not to express pride very often, but the, the person I'm about to uh, introduce you to is someone I'm, I'm very proud to have as our representative in many capacities. Um, this is the president of the Michigan Community College Association. Her name is Brandy Johnson, and I'll just take a few minutes to tell you a little bit about her. Um, I'll probably steal a little of her thunder because I, I know she probably would introduce herself with a little bit of her background, but I'll, I'll do a little bit of it for her because I am so proud of who she is and how she represents us. Um, Ms. President Johnson uh, has uh, been a leader and 
someone who's willing to take on big challenges for a long time. She started something called the Michigan College Access Network um, and helped bring uh, awareness to the need to help students get access to college. Uh, she ran that uh, outfit from one person to, I believe she had, at the highest point maybe had uh, 10 staff. Would you have 10 staff? 14, 14 staff, uh, President Johnson. And um, from there, when Governor Whit Whitmer was elected, she went looking for the brightest and best support staff in higher education. And uh, she took on uh, Ms. Johnson in the executive office where she advised uh, policy on higher education generally. Uh, to, a, to a new governor and then a governor in crisis, a governor during a pandemic. And uh, because Ms. Johnson was such a valuable staff member at the executive office, the governor saw fit to not only help, uh, not only have her help the governor with higher education, she said, well, why don't you take on P-12 also? And so during the, the pandemic, uh, President Johnson was advising the governor on P-12, uh, higher education, and then, of course, um, I, I, I think she'd be okay with me telling you that she has two young children and um, was also uh, going into the world of constituent services. So that means any college president who was upset or worried or um, concerned, and there were a lot of us, uh, when, they, when we called the governor's office, it was Ms. Johnson who you'd get. And I was really happy for that because I had seen her um, early in her career, and then I saw how well she was handling the pandemic and the stress of working from her basement. And I talked to her in her basement on the telephone probably more times than I can remember, um, which is why I was so excited when I saw her name on the list of people who was applying to become the new president of the Michigan Community College Association. And um, one of the things that caught my eye was uh, President Johnson had both Democrats and Republicans in the state legislature saying she was the right person to lead the Michigan Community College Association. And you may or may not know, but at the time there were 28 community colleges in Michigan. There still are 28 community colleges, but also the MCCA now has brought in three tribal colleges. So um, it's a difficult job. And I was worried, as many college presidents are, about how someone could corral 28 different viewpoints, uh, ranging colleges from 700 students to 18,000 students. And all throughout our state, we, we, we frankly have struggled to try to find the best clear path for all 28 of us. And um, I was very excited when President Johnson said she wanted the job. I, I thought she was a little crazy. but. Um, she, she dispelled those notions by one of the best interviews I've ever seen. And I, it wasn't just me that said that. We, we had an opportunity as a college to put in one vote for one candidate. And, and we, as Henry Ford College, voted for then uh, candidate Johnson, as did the vast majority of the member colleges. And it's paid off in the short time that she's already been here in one year. For example, um, she helped us deal with a, a long, vexing problem at the Michigan Community College Association with the question of whether we should offer four-year degrees for nursing. I won't go into the great depths about that, but there were a lot of strong views and a big gap between them. And President Johnson not only brought us together to deliver that kind of uh, consensus, but in the, in the process showed the legislature, who was very desirous for us to get our act together as community colleges, that we were worthy of investment. And so now each community college has uh, $2 million to move forward helping our students and the nursing program uh, achieve their four-year degree and that $2 million came to each community college. Um, she was also successful in her first six months in getting what is one of the larger appropriations for the entire community college system uh, during a time we were in crisis. And uh, I just, I can tell you because I try hard to advocate on behalf of our college, those types of big appropriations increases don't happen unless people trust and listen to the voice and President Johnson's voice six months into her term was very successful. You know how much I care about strategic planning, and if it weren't enough to tell you all those things that uh, President Johnson has accomplished, I would add that she also shepherded uh, a strategic plan through the Michigan Community College Association, again, gathering those now 31 members of the association behind a vision that is focused on student success. And uh, I'll even say she was able to do it in quicker time than your president was at Henry Ford College, um, and I didn't think that was possible, um, which is, uh, which is the last thing I'll say is that she's got us facing in the right direction, all, all heading in the right direction. And um, one thing she said when she started was that she was going to get out to every single community college. Now, this is a big state, folks. You know that there's two peninsulas. Um, I, was, I wasn't sure she'd do it. 
um, with two young children and um, a full-time job kind of setting a Michigan Community College Association when you start maybe some transitions and jobs, uh, uh, employees, which she's dealt with, but um, I, I think she's gonna make it. And I told her, look, I, I just want you to work on the budget. I just want you to work on nursing. I just want you to work on the strategic plan. When those are done, you can come see us at Henry Ford College. Um, and I guess that time has now come. Um, so President Johnson, um, I welcome you to Henry Ford College. Uh, it's a pride point for you to be here. I hope um, it's now com abundantly clear I'm supportive of you. Um, and um, I would tell you that uh, you probably know this is the only board you're gonna be before in your, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Trustee Tour 22, what is it? Hashtag Trustee Tour 22. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is the only one you're going to get school board members yes. with trustee members in the same flesh. Yeah. Uh, and this board has been through a lot. Um, I've heard. <laughs> and, um, and they're excited to hear from you, and um, they know that I support you, and we're hopeful and, and, and excited to hear what you have to say, but also to continue to follow your lead as the new president of Michigan Community College Association. So welcome. Well, thank you. That is by far and away the most generous introduction I have had on my tour. And this is officially stop number 26 uh, on my uh, trustee tour. I had one, uh, this would have been 27th, but I made a very valiant attempt to get to Kirtland Community College last Thursday during what was a blizzard in my mind and so I got halfway and had to turn around and go back but I will get to them um, only a couple of colleges left as President Cavaluna mentioned I am the still relatively new president of the Community College Association I've been on the job for 11 months and uh, it has been truly an honor and a pleasure to be the voice of community colleges uh, in this state. Uh, Russ did a really great job of uh, uh, ex introducing my background. The only thing I'll, I'll add is that I'm a very proud first generation college going student. No one in my family had pursued post-secondary education before I did. So the work that you do as community colleges is that much more personal uh, to me because I know the life changing impact of achieving a post-secondary education can have. Um, and I, I've seen it in my, my own family. Uh, uh, as President Cavaluna mentioned, um, just prior to this role, after spending almost nine years at the Michigan College Access Network as its founding executive director, I was uh, uh, tapped to help the governor achieve her goal of 60 by 30, which she set in her first State of the State address to increase Michigan's post-secondary educational attainment rate from where we were at, a rough, at around 44% to 60% by the year uh, 2030. I had worked um, uh, with candidate Whitmer and then during uh, governor-elect Whitmer on sort of putting it together. And then after she announced it in her state of the state address, she called me and said, okay, I did exactly what you told me to do. Now you have to come and help me do it. Um, obviously, uh, our biggest achievement that first year was getting Michigan Reconnect done, which I think is the uh, most prominent bipartisan win that the Whitmer administration had during her first term. And it paves the way to make community college tuition free for all adults in Michigan, 25 and older. Just after we had finally gotten uh, enough votes to pass Michigan Reconnect and to fund it in the budget, we got our first cases of COVID. And I'll never forget on Wednesday, March 12th, 2020, uh, the governor asked me to bring together all of the college presidents in the state. There's about 70 of them. We had a, a conference call and she said, look, I don't know what this pandemic is gonna be. I don't know if it's gonna have short-term impacts or long-term impacts, but I do know that we are committed to being transparent with each of you. And if you need anything, call Brandy. And, and as President Cavaluna <laughs> said, <laughs> they did early and often. Uh, and so honestly, um, the one blessing from that, uh, uh, from my perspective, is that I really got to witness true leadership on all of these college campuses uh, across the state. And that was certainly true of President Cavaluna, who I thought had tremendous leadership during uh, this public health crisis. And 
uh, when my predecessor, Mike Hansen, announced that he was going to retire after uh, 15 years, uh, President Cavaluna was particularly um, encouraging of, of my candidacy and I think gave me a lot of confidence going into what I have to think is got to be one of the world's most intimidating interview processes. Uh, the MCCA board at the time had 56 board members and they wanted to bring the final candidates to interview with the full board. So it's me on a stage in front of 56 people. Uh, and so if I could get through that, I think I can um, uh, get through anything. And it's it's been honestly a real pleasure. Um, and we've had a really great year. Uh, so I just wanted to give you a couple updates on the association and give a couple updates on some policy happenings in Lansing and happy to answer any questions. Uh, as, as President Cavaluna mentioned, we did successfully adopt a strategic plan. Uh, the, the community colleges are very diverse in themselves, but we went through a, a very thorough uh, process to adopt a new strategic plan uh, for the association. And it was the first time that the association had really significantly updated its mission statement, which now reads that we are the unified voice for Michigan's community colleges, empowering our members to lead in the areas of student success, talent development, and community vitality. The fact that we could agree that the association is the unifying voice was a victory in and of itself. Um, and then it really speaks to the role of the association, and that is really to build the capacity of our presidents and our trustees so that they may lead in their communities on areas related to talent, student success, and uh, community vitality. Uh, public policy and advocacy will be our number one priority. That was very loud and clear during the strategic policy or the strategic planning process that the real strength of the association is to be headquartered in Lansing and to be working with our legislators and the governor's office uh, day in and day out to advocate on behalf of the interests of community colleges and the students they serve. Um, but in addition, the association plays some other roles that I'll just mention um, um, quickly. Uh, one is uh, we, for the first time, adopted a very intentional goal around diversity, equity, and inclusion and developed a comprehensive commitment to DEI practices in all of our work. Uh, and then also member services and programs. Um, one of the sort of more invisible roles that the association plays is helping colleges save money um, by collaborating with each other and sort of using that joint purchasing power. Uh, uh, Michigan is the only state in the country that does not have a state higher education executive office. Um, it makes us incredibly unique. Mo every other state in the country has a coordinating board or, or governing board or a, even a full department cabinet level position to help coordinate uh, higher education, including things like administrative functions. And so uh, absent that, the association can certainly play a role in allowing the colleges to collaborate with each other and, and, and join each other on, on things that, that help everyone. Uh, so we will continue to do those member services and foster opportunities, new opportunities to collaborate on behalf of all of our colleges. Um, uh, as President Cavaluna mentioned, we're also particularly proud that at our first board meeting with myself as president, we amended our bylaws unanimously to allow Michigan's tribal colleges to join the association. So now we are 31 members strong, including 28 um, traditionally publicly funded community colleges, as well as our three tribal colleges who are relatively small, but um, really benefit from the networking opportunities uh, with their peers. Uh, and we've also been able to sort of restructure the association to streamline some of our functions and I was able to hire some new staff, which is uh, really exciting. We'll have dedicated, um, uh, a dedicated individual, um, Ashley Wisniewski, who will be dedicated to member services, sort of being responsive to the needs of our colleges. Um, and then um, Katie Witkowski, uh, who started last week, who will be our full-time director of government affairs to sort of um, double or triple down our advocacy efforts. And that's the last thing I'll, I'll mention is our advocacy efforts, uh, which is where I have spent, when I'm not on the road visiting Board of Trustees meetings, um, I'm uh, usually meeting with legislators or attending legislative hearings um, and helping to inform uh, public policy. Our 
uh, public policy agenda is determined by our legislative committee. Aside from our executive committee, our legislative committee is the one only other committee that is um, extremely active, meets more frequently than even the executive committee. And I'm really um, delighted to say that President Cavaluna was just named chair of our legislative uh, committee uh, unanimously by the legislative committee um, and with the blessing of our chair. Uh, President Beverly Walker Graffia, the president of Mott Community College. And so um, I think that speaks volumes about his abilities to um, really navigate the, the waters in Lansing. Um, and he's already, he's hit the ground running and done a really great job. Uh, we had a very positive budget cycle for the first time in this administration. The budget was done on July 1st and not September 30th at midnight, which I think helped to inform um, the processes of setting your budgets based on your fiscal year, which was great. The um, Overall, the colleges had about a 5% increase, which was really a net 4% increase in operations. And what was exciting about that 4% is that it was an ongoing increase as opposed to a one-time increase, which is really really what we've seen for many, many years is sort of a, a one-time only increase that didn't reset the base. The 4% net increase that we saw reset the base for, for each college um, without making significant modifications to our funding formula. In addition, uh, there were massive wins as it relates to student financial aid. Not only did Michigan Reconnect continue to enjoy full funding at $55 million uh, dollars annually, which is more than enough to to run the program. The state also agreed on a sort of still unbelievable amount of money, $250 million, that's meant to be an ongoing scholarship to serve traditional age students. We have Reconnect serving um, adults 25 and older, um, but our financial aid programs that serve those 18-year-olds that are state dollars is re are really lackluster. And so the new Michigan Achievement Scholarship, which was just announced a couple of weeks ago, will go into effect this academic year for the high school graduating class of 2023. Um, we were able to successfully uh, convince the state to not create another bureaucratic application for the for the uh, Michigan Achievement Scholarship. The only application is your FAFSA. When you do your FAFSA, FAFSA you've unlocked the Achievement Scholarship. We were also to we were also able to advocate for for students attending Henry Ford College. They will get two thousand seven hundred fifty dollars uh, for up to three years. But what's really exciting about that twenty seven fifty is the first seventeen fifty is first dollar, meaning it comes before the Pell Grant. So for our Pell eligible students, it will really allow those dollars uh, to stretch further, which is a good um, tangible example of our commitment to to student success. Uh, in addition, the budget included a couple of special projects. President Cavaluna mentioned one of them, uh, which was really exciting, a $56 million investment in uh, nursing that hopefully puts to bed this, this really nasty political fight that we were in with the four-year institutions that um, put elected officials in, in a really rough spot. Um, on this issue of whether or not community colleges ought be able to confer baccalaureate degrees in nursing. Um, we reached a compromise um, that I actually think very much leverages the best assets of the community colleges, which is their location and their students. Um, the compromise dictates that a community college will be able to select a four-year institution that is accredited in nursing and require that four-year institution to deliver um, those bachelor's degree courses right on the campus of the community college, again, making it as seamless as possible for the students. For students getting their ADN degree, they'll be able to earn their degree and never leave Henry Ford College uh, while pursuing their bachelor's degree. And they're, at that point, they're probably also working for one of your local employers. Um, and the legislature invested $2 million for each college. In addition, we got a $10 million grant that will run through the association um, for each college to do an academic catch-up program. We recognize how much COVID um, uh, has impacted the learning, and we also recognize this 
huge achievement we have with the Michigan Achievement Scholarship. We want to make sure that those students from the class of 23 are as ready as possible for college level work. And so there will be money for you all to run your own summer bridge program this summer for that graduating class of 23. It's pretty significant um, dollars um, to hopefully help students be able to enter right into college level non remedial coursework um, in the fall of 23. And then lastly, $5 million is a partnership with the Michigan Department of Corrections to support corrections officers. Corrections officers need 50 college credits um, to be a corrections officer, um, yet uh, many of the individuals that they're recruiting only have a high school diploma. Um, and so through a waiver, the Michigan Department of Corrections will hire individuals with a high school diploma, put them through the Corrections Academy, uh, and then uh, encourage that individual to complete their 15 college credit on their own. Through this grant, we'll be able to fully reimburse the colleges for the cost of educating um, those corrections officers um, who are new in their in the, their career um, so that was um, also very very exciting obviously we just had an election as you all know better than most um, that really I think changed uh, the way we'll be approaching our advocacy <clears throat> strategy looking into 23 while we had a long list of items that we were hoping to get done during lame duck it's now looking more and more like there uh, will be little or no lame duck, meaning the legislature isn't really planning on meeting to do real business uh, between now and December 31st. Uh, but we will be able to hit the ground running on January 1st with a new legislature um, that I think will be um, incredibly friendly to the asks of our community colleges. Um, so with that, I will, I will stop. Happy to answer any of your questions. Again, thank you so much for inviting me uh, to your community, and it's a real pleasure um, to be with you all. And, and also, I should say thank you to Trustee Watts, who sits on our board of directors um, uh, as of July 1st. And so uh, we, every college has their president and one trustee sit on the MCCA board of directors. And so through this process, I've really gotten to know Trustee Watts, um, and that's been a real pleasure. And I'm uh, very appreciative of her advocacy uh, efforts uh, in Lansing and in Washington, DC. So thank you, and I'll just be um, uh, hanging out, listening to your to a meeting. But please know that my staff and I are always here um, to help you with any needs that you have. President Johnson, I just want to say it's a pleasure to meet you. We've spoken on the phone, yes. and uh, you were very helpful. So it's nice to meet you in person. Very nice to Welcome meet you in person. Campus. Thank you so much. Thank you. Madam Chair, I'll be brief with the remainder of my comments. I want to highlight for you all the efforts we're taking here at the college to get folks energized about being back on campus. That's something I feel uh, quite strongly about and I'm willing to um, be innovative about. Uh, you know that the first Fridays is an open town hall forum that I hold with anyone who wants to be there, and it's usually students and staff. <clears throat> and uh, in the fall, I thought, well, let's, let's get them back on campus and I'll go jogging with them. Um, and some of my teammates said, you know, nobody really wants to jog, Russ. Uh, so, I said, <laughs> so I said, well, then we'll do a jog and then a walk. Um, and we, we did that for the two months of our fall semester that were warm enough to do it. And um, we had some, some good attendance, uh, not great, but some decent attendance, and I was happy to uh, see a couple trustees, uh, at least one trustee, Trustee Watts was here, I believe. Um, I walked. And, oh, yes, uh, <laughs> Trustee Pelichkoff walked. Um, and, uh, you know, recognizing when one effort is not as great as maybe a different effort, I pivoted a bit, uh, Madam Chair, and um, we did dinner and hoops uh, very recently, which was where I invited uh, students and staff to come have dinner with me at our wonderful restaurant, 5101 and then go watch our nationally ranked basketball team. That uh, My wife and children attended that with us and it was a great event. The uh, food was fantastic. The Hawks uh, really creamed the opponent. I don't even remember what their name was, but um, it, was, it was, I think they scored 106 or seven points. It was fantastic. Um, and uh, the good news about that, Madam Chair, is that uh, we put the, the, the sign-up sheet on the internet, um, and we didn't really know what we'd get, but we had to stop taking uh, requests at 50, uh, which was great. And so uh, we know some folks aren't as into hoops as they might be other uh, aspects of our campus, so uh, in two weeks I'll be hosting pizza and a play, 
and uh, of course trustees like Dinner and Hoops and First Fridays, you're welcome to join us. It'll be uh, pizza here in the foyer of the Administrative Services Building. We, we would be at 5101, but they uh, have another function going on there. And then when we're done with pizza, uh, we'll walk across the campus to the Adre Theater and watch uh, the theatrical production that is this, this semester's um, theater department's production. I believe my wife and uh, children will be joining us then also. And that is uh, one of another effort to, to show the community what a valuable resource we are and why it's exciting to be back together on campus. And so uh, please tell your friends and family that uh, if they want to join us, we'd love to have them. Remind me of the date again, please. December 1st. Okay. okay. A couple other exciting things. Uh, and this is, this is the crescendo of the president's items. These are the really exciting things that I, I just couldn't wait to talk about. Um, one is some of you saw we, we now, I alluded to this at the last board meeting about a big announcement. And um, uh, we have now uh, accomplished what I think is the first in our time having our neighbor U of M Dearborn next to us where um, Henry Ford College graduates have a, a clear transfer pathway, including guaranteed admission at U of M Dearborn. And when they start here at Henry Ford College, they have even better opportunities to understand more about U of M Dearborn and the transfer agreement. I see two of our honors program students here who spoke at that press conference. Um, if you haven't met them, uh, trustees, please, um, please do uh, take some time to say hello to them. They represented Henry Ford College well. Their pictures are in the newspaper um, and they're, they're points of pride for Henry Ford College. That effort also, um, generated news in the Detroit news. Uh, Domenico Grasso and I, the chancellor, were on Fox 2 with Rup Raj, uh, and just last week we published an op-ed in the Detroit news. So uh, we, we hope this will be one of many such announcements, and um, stay tuned because I think we've got another one in the offing in December. Uh, also uh, very excited, in this very room, less than five days ago, uh, the Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Foundation held its board meeting. And while I wasn't allowed to be with the board the entire time, uh, Vice President Best and I were allowed to be on a panel that presented to them uh, about student success initiatives. And in um, last September, the, the Ralph C. Wilson Jr. Foundation announced that they were planning to give in the neighborhood of $20 million per year for four years to advance student success initiatives, which uh, wasn't coincidental that we lined up our strategic plan on those uh, arguments and those ideas and so it was really exciting when the uh, Wilson Foundation asked to use your boardroom for a foundation meeting and uh, I expect to make a, an announcement later this year about what they voted on um, as a grant to Henry Ford College and I can just tell you that um, I believe it'll be the largest grant in the history of the college. Um, uh, the last two announcements I have are probably the most exciting, at least for the board. We, we need to congratulate two of your colleagues for winning re-election. It's um, uh, been a long year for the board. Um, public service now has taken on uh, more seriousness, particularly here in Dearborn. And so um, all of you have won election, but uh, those two of you who won re-election this year, I think deserve a particular uh, nod of the hat. That's Trustee Hussein Barry and Trustee Pat D'Ambrosio. Congratulations on your re-election, and I look forward to working with you on this board, as I'm sure your colleagues do. And then, of course, the cream of the top of this cake is uh, our chair. Happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, if, if, if you have a birthday between board meetings, you don't get to get out of me saying happy birthday. Um, you've you've uh, served this college well. You've had a long run as chair. I mean, 11 months, but man, some of those months have been, uh, not, every, not every chair goes through what you've gone through. And um, I say to you, uh, you probably gained more than one year on the odometer after all how <laughs> you've been through, but you're still here, you're still showing up, you're still our leader, and we wish you a happy birthday. And I know it's hard to believe, but that's the completion of my comments, Madam Secretary. Thank you. Next item, please. Recognition and acknowledgments. Good evening. Thank you, President Cabahuna, Chair McDonald, uh, and members of the board. My name is Jay Elias. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, and I graduated from Aviation High School in Queens in 1987. Like many emerging adults, I grappled with the task of establishing my identity and wound up joining the United States Marine Corps uh, immediately after my graduation. I served my country honorably, and I got the opportunity to travel the world first station in Okinawa, Japan, 
and as part of my active duty service, we traveled to places like Mount Fuji, South Korea, Thailand, Singapore, and the Philippines. This was a unique and exciting experience, but it came at a cost. At the end of the first Gulf War in 1991, I was discharged and suffering terribly, terribly <clears throat> from the effects of chronic stress, uh, undiagnosed and untreated with, for PTSD at that time. I struggled with mental health issues and eventually wound up going to prison for 11 years. It took many years to develop coping mechanisms which allowed me to function as a productive member of society. And during that time, I battled depression, drug addiction, and thoughts of suicide. I finally sought help from the VA in 2017, and on the road to recovery, I discovered healing through art and the creative process. This eventually led me to enrolling at Henry Ford College in pursuit of a degree in psychology. I'm currently part of the honors program here at Henry Ford. I've maintained a 4.0 GPA since my enrollment. Last summer, I became an Engelhart Social Justice Fellow with the University of Michigan through a program offered here at Henry Ford. And this fall, I was nominated into the National Society for Leadership and Success. Education is the great equalizer, and I plan to transfer into the honors program at Wayne State University next fall in order to obtain my bachelor's degree in psychology. One of my goals is to be accepted into their art therapy graduate program and eventually become an art therapist. I currently own and operate Evolution Art Studio in Detroit, where I've created a program called Metal Health that provides free art therapy-based workshops to veterans and first responders. The support and encouragement I received at Henry Ford has been nothing short of amazing. And I'd like to take this moment to say thank you to everyone here uh, for helping provide an opportunity to change the trajectory of my life. Now, I'm pleased to read this month's HFC board acknowledgments. Number one, congratulations to the following volleyball players who received MCCAA Eastern Conference honors. Sydney Murray, sophomore, second team, all Eastern Conference. Lauren Hardy, who's one of my classmates, by the way. <laughs> sophomore, honorable mention, all Eastern Conference. Alyssa Sanner, sophomore, honorable mention, all Eastern Conference and Ellie McDonald, another one of my classmates. Sophomore, honorable mention, all Eastern Conference. <laughs> Number two, the Quarian Cole has been selected as the MCC AA Eastern Conference Basketball Player of the Week for the week ending November 5th. Cole had 48 points and 11 rebounds in a pair of games against Bryant and Stratton College and Kalamazoo Valley. He also had 11 assists, three steals, and two blocks as the Hawks went 2-0 for the weekend. Cole followed up the honor by being named MCCAA Eastern Conference Men's Basketball Player of the Week for a second straight week. He had 23 points, eight rebounds, six assists, and three steals as the Hawks defeated Terra State Community College, improving the team's record to 3-0. We'd like to say congratulations to Quarian. Number three, the Hawks men's basketball team has jumped to fifth in the latest NJCAA Division II men's basketball poll. The team debuted at eighth in the preseason poll and has been steadily moving up in the rankings while compiling an unbeaten record of 3-0. Congratulations to Chardon Claiborne, faculty director at the Learning Lab and Tutoring Services. Chardon co-offered co-authored the article, Anti-Racist Activities and Policies for Student-Led Study Groups, published in the Journal of, Co Journal of College Academic Support Programs, Fall 22, Volume 5, Issue 1. Number five, uh, HFC commem commemorated Veterans Day 2022 with a ceremony in our student center on November 10th, 2022. Thanks to the Michigan Veterans Affairs Agency, she's a veteran initiative who allowed us to display banners which shared stories of six women who represent the diverse backgrounds of Michigan veterans. These women shared their stories hoping that their personal journeys will resonate with all individuals and can encourage military women to speak up and proudly identify with their veteran status. 
In addition, student Ed Stokes, a U.S. Army veteran, and HFC staff member Kathy Edwards, a U.S. Marine Corps veteran, spoke in person about their military experience. Thank you to President Kawahuna and Vice President Diamond for attending and highlighting our military veterans. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be this month's reader. And uh, do you have any questions that I may be able to answer for you? Uh, Trustee Watts. Uh, thank you, Jay. Uh, we just um, celebrated Veterans Day, so I want to say thank you for your service. But I want to say thank you for sharing your story with your struggles. And I think your story, although it's not unique, is very brave because I think we know so many, as you are sharing your story, of adults who are suffering and they don't know and they don't know the the outlet that sounds like you have found that not only works for you but a gift that you are going to give to those other students and veterans so i just want to say i applaud you for not only your bravery on the field but off the field because i think those are those injuries that nobody sees the mental health injuries so um but i'm curious what brought you to michigan um actually it was the it, it was 2013 when i arrived so it was the real estate opportunities that were available here um, i was able to buy a house really cheap um, which made it much easier to live so well i look forward to seeing your studio so thank you, thank you. anyone else anybody i too would also like to thank you for the your service and uh your story is just amazing and thank i appreciate you. you sharing it and i know it's not always easy to do that um just to let you know, I have two sons that are veterans, and uh, they both have some issues. One has more than the other, so I understand your plight, and it's really hard to get back on course and to uh, to overcome some of the obstacles that's been put in your way. So, so kudos to you. Thank you. Um, one of my sons is a very, very creative. He loves building things, and I think I would love to send him my to way. You studio I yeah will. yeah send them my way absolutely it's free for veterans and first responders so if you know anybody who's a emt or a nurse i'm sure plenty of us know nurses here mm -hmm. um you know it's a great way to decompress from the pressure cooker that could be you know the job of a first responder absolutely trustee Peshikov. Your story's inspiring, thank and we've you. been hearing, um, and I thank you, President Cavaluna, or whoever's selecting our, our speakers lately have had some um, inspirational um, stories to share. And I just wanted to highlight something as we have somebody who is advocating for community colleges. Before I took a seat here, and this is my third term on the um, college board, when I was a graduate, of high school in the mid 70s and looking for college community colleges were poo pooed they were they were not the place to go they were considered an extension of high school and once i became a board member a trustee i discovered the real value in community colleges that can add to somebody's story as a as they um and there is a wide variety of stories out there um, that we have impacted um, across this nation probably in the community college setting and providing opportunities to um, advance and I'm happy to hear your successes thank you I'm happy that we could be a part of that success and I want you to take back to Lansing that this is the real value of a community college setting is and we do see successes even if they think that it's a number on a sheet of paper that says how many people graduated <clears throat> that's not what the success is in my estimation and we need to make sure that we continue to promote the stories that you shared and that others like you will share with us in the future and I really appreciate your being um, able to come forward and, you, and feel comfortable enough and I'm glad that we had a place for you to find some success. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to say also, I'm first generation college, so thanks for pushing for us. Yeah, it really means a lot. 
So Jay, I, I should have told you, no no student gets through one of those presentations without an interrogation by me. <laughs> uh, Look forward to it. And, and I, um, I'm glad the trustees gave you the easier questions because I'm gonna give you a couple hard ones. Um, I think you may be the first student who's been here um, who's come to the podium with a 4.0. Really? Um, do trustees, am I, am I right about that? So the tough question is, Elena has a 4.0. Is that right, Elena? Okay, yeah. all right. Well, then I didn't ask her this one, but I'm going to ask you. What, what, are you going to graduate with a 4.0? Statistically speaking, <laughs> it doesn't look good. <laughs> So I'm actually taking statistics this semester, and it's it's quite challenging. Um, I've been doing everything that I can, Khan Academy, YouTube. Uh, I go to the learning lab. I'm gonna pass. He's digging hard. I'm digging hard. <laughs> I'm gonna pass. But statistically speaking, the chances don't look that good. All right, all right. I'm well, striving, but you know. Well, I, there's no doubt that you'll you'll strive. I I I, I knew it was a hard question, uh, and I appreciate the honesty. Um, what uh, what can we do to help your transfer to Wayne State University? Have you thought through those processes yet? You know, it's been this whole experience has been absolutely magical for me since day one. Gail Bach, I don't know. Yep. Everybody here knows who Gail is. She's an amazing asset to your college. Um, she works tirelessly with the veterans to make sure that their experience is seamless, which it's been since I enrolled. Um, I had never expected it to be such an easy process. Um, you know, when I grew up and, and went to school back in the 80s, it was a lot different. You know, you were expected to go to college, um, which is kind of why I went to the military. I was a little hard-headed back then. But um, if I had known that it would be like this, I mean, um, I can't really ask for anything more. Honestly, this has been incredible. Um, we just had a transfer workshop through the honors program. Dr. Hazlitt, that program that he's putting together with the honors, it's top notch. Um, the Wayne State people came in. They told me that I was eligible to transfer already. So I've already initiated the proceedings, you know, to, to transfer. And hopefully in the fall, I'll start in their honors program. So. Well, I, I hope you graduate from HFC first. And if I can convince you of that, uh, heck, I'll even buy you lunch to convince you of that. Um, but my tough questions are over. I, I want to say a few things, um, Jay. Uh, you may or may not know this, but I want to say that I've watched it and I want to compliment you on it. A couple things. This is the, the script you read, and it's never this long. Uh, you're the longest reader I think I've seen, and you did a great job. Reading in public is not easy, and I do it for a living, and you do it better than me. So uh, congratulations. I don't know if you had any inhibitions when you came up here, but you killed it. Um, Thank you. And second, uh, that kind of courage that you showed there and the poise, it's, I can see that it affects other people. Uh, I suspect your colleagues, Mark Roby and Elena Kondraziak, are here because they support you. And the reason why I know that is because when I last saw you in the Honors Hub, uh, trustees, Jay was, was teaching Mark and Elena and some others um, the art that he, he worked on. And he came over and talked to me and showed me about it. I don't know if you know the effect you have on people, but it's, it's very, very, um, well, magical was the word you talked about with HFC, but I could see that. Um, and um, you seem well, well placed to, to have a career melding psychology with art. I saw it in front of my eyes, so um, keep going. Thank you. Um, and you seem to have earned the trust and respect of, of faculty. You have uh, Chelsea Lonsdale right behind you. I suspect she's here to support you, and she's a respected and knowledgeable and a discerning faculty member. So um, I just want you to know that I see what you're doing is successful beyond a 4.0 that's going to fall behind statistics. Right. Your, your life is, is a really, really wonderful testament to perseverance, service, and 
um, having impact on people. I can see that, and I just I'm I'm really proud to have been a part of an institution that played a small part. Thank you. So sir. thanks for thanks for the courage you showed today. All right. Absolutely. I want to add just one other thing real quickly. Um, being someone else that just missed a 4.0 by one class, <laughs> and I ended up being a C minus in calculus. I am at this day, to this day, more proud of that C minus than any A because I worked so hard right, for it. Right? So. Do you ever use calculus right now? <laughs> no. No, right? Okay, okay. So you don't have to feel so, that. So congratulations, and thank you so much for introducing yourself and coming speaking. To You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. Thank you all so much. Is that all? That's You're all. relieved. Yes, right. you don't have to stay. Next item, please. Citizen participation. Citizens wishing to address the board on agenda and non-agenda items for action and have submitted a blue card by 6.10 p.m. to the secretary may speak at this time. The board may not be in a position to respond to non-agenda items. Therefore, speakers should not anticipate an immediate response to their comments or questions. For the benefit of all concerned, do not mention the names of students or college employees and please limit comments to three minutes. Next item, please. Next item. Are there any action items on this agenda which board members of the president wish to discuss and vote on separately? If there are, we will exclude these from the actions below. Trustee Thorpe. Uh, question on number one, I do not need it pulled. Move to approve action items numbered one through 17 as recommended in this agenda. Trustee Thorpe, what is your question? So move. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we have to move. We have to move it. Support. I have a, a motion by Trustee Thorpe, supported by Trustee uh, Barry. Are there any other questions besides pulling I have that? a question on the three as well. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. We'll start with uh, Trustee Thorpe. Uh, it says that this is for <clears throat> work on athletic team locker room renovation. Is it men's, women's, both? Is, is this like a total redo of all locker rooms or just one? Uh, I asked a very question last week when I was talking to the county and student services. It's the men's locker room on the lower, lower level. Work in the prep area for the men's locker room and also preparatory for the women's locker room, which is on a different floor. I do not believe there are, how should I say, equal facilities between the two. The question that I've raised that we're going to have to address once this is addressed and start planning is to make sure we're, in a, uh, we're not in a, in an issue of a lot of time. So to answer your question, yes, it's a lot, uh, lot of locker room. There are both uh, teams that are both genders that are getting uh, renovations done, but we have the funds still beyond that now as well. Thank you. Trustee Mosep, your question on number three? Yeah, so this is for electric cars, charging station. Is this only for the vehicles that we're also purchasing as part of uh, today's agenda items? I, or is I, it going to be open to all students? You, you got that? I know we have a whole, we have a separate facility for that. Uh, the electric charging station that is on the agenda is being funded by the Federal Vocational Education Grant, so it has to be used exclusively for the automotive tech program. It will be uh, installed uh, just outside of their garage. Trustee Thor. Trustee uh, Mosip's question brings up one for me. Is this a normal cost for a charging station? Because it seems expensive. I said the same. I said the same. It, it, uh, you know, uh, th this is a a fast charging station. So rather than plugging it in in your car, it takes 12 to 24 hours to uh, to charge up. Uh, it could get from a dead battery to a full charge in uh, you know, a couple hours less than that. Okay. So, and it, <clears throat> it's also being used not just to keep the batteries fresh for the vehicles that we're, we're purchasing. Students will be monitoring how that charging process works, how what effect it has on the vehicle depending on uh, you know different loads, different temperatures. Um, so it'll be also used to maintain charging stations. Uh, 
charging stations. Uh, the, the one cool thing I found out about the charging station we're buying uh, just this afternoon, uh, we originally had spec a machine made by, made by the company ABB, which is based in Europe. Uh, availability on that station is about uh, 40 weeks. Of course, it passed the deadline to use corporate space. Uh, the company that submitted the winning bid offered us an alternative uh, from another firm that their factory happens to be in Detroit. And uh, the company's rep talked with the factory rep. Uh, the factory rep said he'd be willing to uh, give a tour to uh, people of the actual production facility for the charging stations. Uh, that'd be a great opportunity for faculty some students to see that operation. Thank you. May I have a roll call, please? Trustee Barry? Yes. Trustee D'Ambrosio? Yes. Trustee Moza? Yes. Trustee Petrikoff? Yes. Trustee Thorpe? Yes. Trustee Watts? Yes. Chair McDonald? Yes. Next item, please. Next item, Board of Trustees Business, Acknowledgements of Correspondence. Um, we received some today, including an invitation to the nurses pinning on December 16th, which is always a wonderful event. And uh, there were a few more in the mail. And uh, SimCog, ACCT. Um, and I believe we received a couple of emails concerning um, uh, return to work. Anyone else? Next item, please. Board committee reports. Um, I can Trustee go. Watts. Uh, policy met earlier today. Um, we reviewed three policies. Um, one of them was the institutional, the institution travel <laughs> account policy. Um, the other one was relations with educational institutions, and the third one was technology investment fund policy. Um, some of them, the institution travel account policy. And thank you, Ms. Clark, for the summary of this. Um, it'll just, this policy clarifies that certain departments receive a part of their budget funds for travel business, um, relations with educational institutions, um, it just needs to be updated with sense, sentence structure changes, and the technology investment fund policy, um, there's no substantive changes, it's just going to continue to state that all expenditures from the TIF shall require prior authorization by the board upon recommendation of the president. Um, we also um, discussed three previous policies, um, board orientation, conflict of interest, board of ethics, I'm sorry, bylaws, not policies, bylaws, and citizen participation. Um, and there was some history that needs to be discussed as to whether uh, to add guidelines to the bylaws and Trustee Thorpe had reminded that we um, had this discussion a year or two ago about creating a operating procedure manual that will take into account those unwritten rules. So um, I reached out to Brad from MASB as to the best practice whether or not to add guidelines to bylaws and he suggested instead to create an operating procedure manual that will encompass all of those unwritten rules and he gave us an example from Berkeley schools. Okay. Um, so the policy committee th we discussed and thought that was probably best practice just to kind of have the manual to encompass all of those unwritten rules that I think from board to board we maybe hold internally but now to actually put it on paper so that we have it going forward. Um, and I know with COVID, that kind of put a pause on cleaning up and putting this all on paper. Um, so I think going forward, we're going to uh, go forward with the using Berkeley's as a template with their permission um, and put down some of those unwritten rules on paper. Did I miss anything? Anything else to add, Trustee? Uh, D'Ambrosio? Okay, I tried to uncover it. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's it for policy. Thank you. Were there other committee reports? Nope. Next item, please. Request for information and or future agenda items. Anyone here? Oh, Trustee Petrikoff. Well, having the conversation about, and, and 
the purchasing um, requirements, and I didn't want to use this as a question time, about the electric vehicles and where we're stationing the charging station and everything. Um, I just saw a program about um, battery fires with these electric vehicles and the way that they have to be dealt with, which is different than a typical fire. Um, are we going to be able to provide a secure environment while we're um, working, having students working on electric vehicles and or um, housing electric vehicles as this moves forward? I know this is going to be something that everybody has to um, deal with, but I just want to make sure that we have an environment that's capable of managing any potential um, issues that might arise in that regard that we may, you know, have to, have to um, anticipate and be prepared for, especially um, when we're investing a lot in um, the equipment and or the um, technology building as well, and I don't want to see anything accidentally happen that, that we didn't um, prepare for in advance. Yes, Trustee Pelichkoff, I will uh, take that request for information and report it out in whichever way the board uh, directs me to, either a presentation at your next board meeting or a communication. Just a, just a communication would be fine for me, and it's not an urgency. It's just something to um, have uh, so that we know that we have anticipated and prepared. Good question. I'll, I'll report to the board on it. Anyone else? Nope. Hearing none. Next item, please. Board member commentary. Trustee Thorpe. Before we meet again, I want to take a moment to uh, wish everyone that's connected to the college a happy Thanksgiving. And if finals happen before we meet again, <laughs> good luck on those, too. <laughs> okay. but happy Thanksgiving as well. Absolutely. Everyone. Anyone else? Nope. Next item, please. Future meeting dates, Monday, December 5th, 2022, P12 Board of Education meeting, 7 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Frank Franchi Boardroom. Monday, December 12th, 2022, HFC Board of Trustees Policy meeting, 5 p.m. at the Administrative Services and Conference Center in the Cabinet Conference Room. Monday, December 12th, 2022, HFC Board of Trustees meeting, 6 p.m. at the Administrative Service Services and Conference Center in the Rosenau Boardroom. Monday, December 12, 2022, P12 Board of Education Study Session, immediately following the HFC Board of Trustees meeting at the Administrative Services and Conference Center in the Cabinet Conference Room. And we are adjourned.